in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. When I was about 13 or 14, um, my brother came home, my brother who was three years older than me came home with um, the picture disc for uh, Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. And, uh, and we, we put that on. And I remember watching, first off, watching my brother's reaction to it and just how it just completely captured his imagination and it just transported him. And I was like, I want to, I want to be able to, to tr transport people like that because whatever I'm seeing music do to my brother, I want to be able to do to other people. So that was the first time where I thought there might be something here for me. Um, and of course I was so drawn to just the drama and the theatrics of, of Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell. It was such a, such a over the top album. Um, and I think that that really shaped my initial concept of how music should be experienced. So I was always drawn to the to the overly dramatic and the, and the theatric uh, part of it. So and, and then uh, all those years later comes full circle. You end up working with Meatloaf. You end up producing. Uh, yeah. Did you now what what? How was that whole experience working with Meatloaf, knowing that he was kind of like the genesis for you to start the music in the music business? He was. He he became a, a very very dear friend of mine uh, over the years, and um, I, in fact, the, the very first show that I did in Los Angeles um, with Michael Drumming, um, the very first show that I did in support of the Inhale album. Meatloaf came to that show, and I remember just hearing a buzz that he that Meatloaf was at this show. And then the next day, I got a a phone call from Meatloaf, and and which just shocked me. And he was like, "Hey, this is this is Meat. Um, I was at your show last night, uh, and I made some notes. Um, would you be interested in in hearing some suggestions?" So. He proceeded to to spend, well, he invited me out to his house and, and we had just a, a wonderful visit, but he literally took me through note by note of, of these different suggestions he had for my performance. So, and he was just always that way with me. He was always very generous and very loving and kind and, um, and supportive. So yeah, it's just, it's so bizarre that, that my, my, the beginning of my musical journey really did start with with that Bad Out of Hell album. And then the, the day that he invited me out to his house, um, I, you know, I was completely nervous. Just be, I, of course, it's meatloaf, so I'm expecting you know to to be coming up to a to a, a castle, yeah, you know, yeah. with with a moat around with and bats alligators. and motorcycles yeah, with, with, it, flying over it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I so when I got to his house, it was really. <clears throat> It was just kind of a, a a very nice but very basic colonial style house with a white picket fence. So so it wasn't at all what I imagined. Um, but uh, but he was just so gracious. And one of the first things he did, he walks me down this hallway, and at the end of the hallway is the original artwork for Bad Out of Hell, the the artwork that was on that picture disc. And uh, and I remember he just walked me down to it. And it was beautifully lit. It was it seemed like it was in a gallery and. I just stood there and just thought, oh my gosh, if my brother could be here right now, he would just be so excited and, and you know, but I, I, I've just carried that, that memory with me ever since. It was just such a, such a wonderful moment in, in what, what turned out to be kind of the beginning stages of my career. And you obviously kept in touch with him over the years because he did actually uh, ask you to help him with what was it was it bad out of hell three or we did um we did uh, a few albums together uh we did uh, an album called couldn't have said it better where i, I wrote a, a few songs on that me and nikki six co-wrote a, a few songs for him on that um and then on uh there was another album where i i had this just very bizarre song called last los angeluser um, and he just, for some reason, he just loved that song and, yeah. and, and asked me if, if I'd be okay with him doing a version of it. And he put it on one of his albums and, um, and actually just recently, like maybe six months ago, I was flipping through YouTube and a, an a amazing version of him singing that song live, uh, came up on YouTube. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot he cut that song. So, so, and then we did work on, um, we, I did write for Bad Out of Hell 3, uh, which was right. produced by Desmond Child, who I believe you've had on your, on your podcast. Yeah. 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 Love Desmond. 
he's amazing yeah he's he's such a he's such a, a an amazing character i've i've learned so much from him over the years but yeah. um but yeah so i've been lucky enough to to have um quite a bit of of involvement with meatloaf over the years and of course we just we miss him so much it's just crazy that he's gone See, that's the beauty of this podcast is that, uh, you know, one minute we're talking about your upbringing and, you know, us uh, recording the Inhale album. And the next we spend some time, rightfully so, about Meatloaf because he was one of your very first idols. I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method.